So Yasuo gets only the two damage strike here, but then levels up. Everything resolves left or right. I had so much fun with yesterday's Zed video that I thought, why not do it again, but with Yasuo this time. So yesterday's video, if you missed it, you should go watch it. We built a deck entirely based around just leveling up Zed because Zed has a new skin with a new level up animation and I wanted to do something fun and neat. Today, we're going to do the same thing with Yasuo. Yasuo is the other champion that not only got a new skin, but his skin has a new level up animation. So we're going to play a bit of old school Yasuo today. I say old school because this is going to be the Ionia Noxus version. It's going to be similar to the way Yasuo was played way, way back during beta and during the launch period. And I just wanted to take another crack at that, kind of update the list. So we're going to go through the list, but this is the reminder that if you want to just jump ahead in the video to the games, if you don't want to see the deck list, I use time tags so you can do that. Also, if you're new, consider subscribing. But uh, this deck, just as a heads up, I do not expect it to be competitively viable. If you're looking for a ladder deck, I would not recommend playing this. In fact, we're probably just going to play this in normals today because I just want to focus on fun and novelty. That being said, I will put the deck code in the video description. I will put a link to Mobilitics in the video description. And I will also say that while I don't think this is going to be a ladder friendly deck, I don't think that it is built poorly. I'm going to explain my choices. I just think that right now, the current meta is not Yasuo friendly. Yasuo's play style in a meta like this where aggro is very prevalent and it's not just like a single aggressive deck, but there are multiples that are doing very well on the ladder right now. Yasuo traditionally struggles in those scenarios, so I just don't recommend trying to ladder with Yasuo, but we can still go try to have fun. So right out of the gate, just like yesterday, Dancing Droplet. Now, this time around, we're not trying to do the retreat return into a Zed or a Mentor. Nothing, nothing, nothing as powerful as that. But because Yasuo does level up based on not just stuns, but also recalls, including your own units, Droplet and the retreat return combo and a few other things you'll see along the way do help in that regard. Droplet gives us a nice one drop that also gives us the attune and is kind of like an added bonus. There are some other units that we still can put into play and get some benefit with the retreat return. And I'll highlight those as we go through. We're rocking Fey Blade Twirler. This one is pretty standard in Yasuo lists. I know that on Twitter, it's been a bit of a hot button topic amongst uh, some players, or at least on my own feed. Uh, people that I follow in the community have mentioned that Blade Twirler might be a trap. And that, that could be the case. But like I said, I kind of wanted to take a mini trip down Nostalgia Lane. And this was a staple in the launch version of Yasuo lists. So we're rocking it. One of Navori Conspirator. This is here for Droplet, but this is also here for uh, things like replaying Thorn. We've got Concussive Palm in the list. There's a few other triggers that I think Conspirator works really well with. And then even if you don't have those triggers, if you're using Retreat Return and you don't want to do the recall portion, you can just use Return to put this directly into play and skip that retire requirement, not retirement. Don't skip your retirement. Live a long life, folks. But... We're, we're running this as a one of this is kind of a, a bit of an experimentation three copies of retreat just because again we're rocking droplet and the recall of your allies does help with Yasuo as far as leveling Yasuo up and this is a way to save some of our units it's not as good as a nopify as far as pure defense but it can it can bail us out all right rune weaver so the other piece of this puzzle I haven't got to it yet, but if you're paying attention, you can see it on the screen, is that we're rocking Riven today as well. Not because Riven pairs particularly well with Yasuo, though I do think there are some pros, but mostly because Riven is also one of the champions with a skin, and while she doesn't have her own special new level up animation, uh, we still want to showcase those shiny new skins. But Runeweaver works because it's a nice early game drop. The... Stuff that you get, the fragments, 
can actually be really beneficial on Yasuo or on some other units as well. So even if you're not focused on actually leveling Riven through this mechanic, uh, you can still make use of these pretty nicely. And this is a summon effect. So if you use Retreat Return and you're bouncing a droplet, but then you return Runeweaver in, you will get the Reforge because this is a summon effect, not a play effect. Arachnid Sentry. This is a stun on a body. So we use it for that. This is also a great target for coming back with Conspirator. But it is worth noting this is not something you want to use return on because this is a play effect, not a summon effect. So just don't do that by accident. Calling Strike. Uh, we're running this because it's pretty standard in the current meta. One of Monastery. We've got a lot of things that have either summon or play effects that are pretty powerful. And I like running this as a one of just so that if you do draw it, sometimes you set up an engine and you can create some really hairy uh, board states and scenarios for your opponent. Riven. One of the reasons we're running Riven is, of course, the skin. But the other reason is this is a prime target for Retreat Return. It's not necessarily the same level of Zed in yesterday's video, but it's still a quality unit that if you can get it onto the board on round two, you're pretty happy. Speaking of three drops that work really well with Retreat Return, Thorn of Rose is here, and this is a summon effect. So if you return this into play, you do still get the Guile. This is also one of the units not named Riven that you can get a lot of value from the Reforge mechanic from. Because it has five attack, giving this quick attack is very nice. Giving it Overwhelm can sometimes be a great source of damage, and uh, overall it just kind of fits the deck. Three of Concussive Palm, it's a stun, gives us a body, it's fast speed, and again, we've got some of these mechanics like Monastery, like Conspirator, where we can return it to our hand and get additional uses. Same thing here with Homecoming. Homecoming can bounce this unit back. Homecoming obviously can get back our Droplet. You're pretty used to the Homecoming interactions in the current meta because Azir and Aurelia love to use this. Yasuo. The entire point of today's video we're rocking Yasuo because we want to see him level up and have fun along the way and then on the top end it's a lot of one ofs and then more nostalgia so a one of intimidating roar because this is I think uh, a bit niche but there are times where if you've got Yasuo on the board intimidating roar can be a one-sided board wipe or even if you don't have your Yasuo yet sometimes stunning three or four Units will be enough that you level up Yasuo when you do find them. So this is a one of three copies of Legion General. This used to be the go-to finisher in the old school Yasuo Noxus archetype. So I thought, hey, why not take a trip down memory lane and we'll rock it. And then we got one Reckoner for the recurring value in the big body. One Yone, just because again, great play effect. And again, if we get this monastery up and running, you can run into some interesting scenarios where you get a lot of Yon value. And for that same reason, we're also rocking the one of Swiftfoot. So this is the list. As I said before, that code will be in the video description. Link to Mobilitics will be in the video description. So we're just going to jump into some normal games, go have some fun and see if we can level up Yasuo and enjoy that sweet, sweet animation. Well, this ought to be interesting. This is one of the reasons I kind of enjoy jumping into normals from time to time because you run into decks you don't see on the ladder and it's a lot of fun but uh we've got our riven here along with a rune weaver a droplet i think the homecoming goes back we'd love to find a retreat return even though it's not as big of a deal with us attacking on odds here but i think we'll keep this find a culling strike culling strike is going to be really good for azir this is the mono shurima so we basically know what they're opening play is going to be it's going to be a sun disc we find our one of monastery though so that could be a bit fun we'll go ahead and get our poke in we are still rocking the same board as yesterday because we want to enjoy it we can go ahead and make this person a bit angry so they do the old dust star thing we'll call in a planet and nuke it a bit showcase some fun we'll get this rune weaver down one of the nice things about droplet is if this is your two drop it leaves you with mana back for some of these fragments in this case we're just going to take the trade though 
because this was quick attack, you could have made the argument. You wait next round. Take that swing. But in this instance here, we're just going to go ahead and develop our ribbon. Really like the art on the cosmic ribbon. For those of you who don't know, you can go all the way in and see the full art on your cards. You do that with this little eye down here. Now, we don't have a way to stop this from attacking us immediately next round. Culling Strike won't be enough to shut this down uh, unless they don't take the open attack, in which case we have the sentry that maybe bails us out. So uh, for now, I think we go ahead and give this quick attack just so that we can get our damage in. Because this is essentially a free four damage. They have no mana. They don't want to sacrifice this for nothing but i expect sadly that this ribbon is going to meet its demise but i i am in fact wrong so we're gonna go ahead and stun this hunter in a stunning turn of events we get to save this ribbon for at least one more round we have a calling strike for this azir at some point now we do actually have to play around some defensive options here though because believe it or not they could have right in negation but even just hourglass so i don't think you lead off with just a a straight up culling strike here we actually could try to level our ribbon we have enough for this this will reforge to give us the other ones so that's three four five for the final blade if we really want to try to just level up this ribbon which is an interesting proposition but i think we're gonna do it but i think we're actually gonna make our droplet here the focus of the extra damage and then slow play it a bit if they spend mana here we'll take the culling strike right now they're just playing more blockers so let's give this one just in case they run things like scrying sands let's go ahead and give I guess this one we'll give this one the overwhelm but we get our ribbon leveled up again same level up animation for her she does not have one of the new animations but the question now becomes what do we want to throw this blade on uh, we're gonna go ahead and throw it here because now at five health even if they block with this it won't be enough and because this also grants overwhelm and quick attack the overwhelm means that they won't be able to chip block with this as much now they could have pocket sand to slow us down they could deny us having the quick attack and the overwhelm uh, given that they're just sitting on that mana i suspect that's going to be the case but this makes them use it and we still don't lose our unit in response so uh, they don't actually have it. We we push a lot of damage here. I'm legitimately a bit stunned. It was not what I was expecting. That's great for us. Because this hunter also no longer directly takes us out here. We've only recalled or stunned one thing so far this game. But we do have Culling Strike here along with monastery and droplets as weird as this sounds because they don't have ways to deal ping damage and because they didn't pre-buff this i think we just take this damage i think we just say okay so that they don't have an opportunity to play any additional combat effects 
And then the only thing that we worry about at that point would be um, maybe something like Spirit Fire. I mean, I guess they could run the four cost slow speed, like deal two to a champion sort of thing. But I think that you just let this through. We have a healthy enough Nexus life total here that I think that's fine. Slow play this a bit with the droplet. Waiting to see if they try to spend more mana before we take this shot. So they're going to go with the time in a bottle there. We do. At, all right. So right now, uh, our glass is the only thing that really punishes us. But we do at some point need to try to pop this before it levels up and speeds this up. In the interim, though, we're going to get our monastery down. And we'll take the shot now. So right now, they have three cards in hand. If they have hourglass specifically, that's a problem. They could also just have another Azir here. But we don't have anything we can do about that. No real way to play around that, so. We get another fragment. We get a Yasuo. We get a sweet, sweet Yasuo who is nowhere near us being in a position to level it up. But we also get the surrender. I don't think they could stop what we had on the board. So there's one game down. We had a lot of fun with Riven that game, but our goal is still Yasuo. So we're going to play another game and see if we can get Yasuo leveled up and have some fun along the way. Well, this is this is interesting. Okay. So we are going to be up against Zoe Leona, and I think this is fine. We don't have early game, but we have a Yasuo and we have sources for two stuns. And then we have a calling strike that we can maybe use for Zoe. So I think I think we're going to keep this because well, I don't think this is necessarily the right move with regards to trying to win for the purposes of our YouTube content, I think this is perfect. We're going to go have some fun. Uh, speaking of fun, our opponent uh, just dropping the turn one concurrent timelines. I feel like at least once per game, you're like required to blow up a planet with this. I could be wrong though. So they go with the sentinel that turns into a duo which is interesting we get another calling strike but we're gonna go ahead and generate this thorn because we want to get these stuns in our hand so that we can start making use of them we might actually just develop Yasuo this next round and see if we can set up a really good intimidating roar Well, this, this is not what we were hoping they would run into, but it does mean, I was about to say it does mean this thorn likely connects, but it turns out, turns out I was wrong on that front. All right, fair. We might be taking five from an open attack if we don't decide to palm it, uh, but I think in this case, we'll, we'll just go ahead and take the palm wanted to develop Yasuo this round with the palm makes sense we'll just try to bank spell mana here wait and see what they do this is actually kind of neat playing timelines with all these daybreak triggers so they went and got their own thorn our Yasuo currently only at one here The irony is that this intimidating roar not super helpful in this regard. Let's go ahead and play a sentry just to have another body. Get our stun count up. And then see if they take that trade or not. Because we can attack with the sentry.
Oh, I really want to see this level up animation, so I kind of don't want to play him early, but I actually think this ends up being correct. So we can do this into a guile there. And that helps us as far as the strike goes, but they also could have removal. They've played multiple daybreak units. And so if they had invoked a comet or a meteor, our Yasuo becomes problematic. Glory Seeker is interesting because that's basically going to eat our Yasuo next round. We don't have anything at fast speed to deal with it. But we can get rid of this. Poor Yasuo. And then they go with a Sentinel. So again, they've got some cards they have invoked. This is at least up to plus three at the moment. I think we pass now. We could attack with Yasuo. Uh, the Sentinel dies though, and it gives them ramp. And so they're going to go written in the stars. Oh, well, they actually play the Zoe. I'm a bit surprised by that. So we're going to go ahead and take this stun attempt so that we can try to protect our Yasuo. And so now we just need one more stun, which we can achieve with the roar next round. But we have to survive that long. And so we're going to have a lot of blocks going around. City Breaker. Interesting. We're going to attempt this. We could use it on the Zoe, but because we have the health total that we do and because we have the roar, I'm more, uh, at least at the moment, concerned with doing something like this just so that we don't take that damage. Because we're just going to start our turn with the roar. We want... We want this big Yasuo play. Because we want to see the cool level up animation. Win or lose. So Yasuo gets only the two damage strike here. But then levels up. Everything resolves left or right. Just out there slashing meteors, asteroids, comets. I don't know what that was, but. Doing his job, making it work. And so they end up with a highwayman, which is still an effective blocker for the Yasuo but we can send everything here this can't block this can't block and uh, this doesn't by itself anyway threaten anything and so we will do our best but our our count is getting higher and higher so these generals have now officially hit the the point in the game where they start to become relevant they become adequate finishers we're about to pay five for an 11 11 fearsome so the time has come for us to call in a general likely our next round because they i mean they've got a lot of stuff as far as the invoke goes but they snap picked whatever that was that is actually concerning Our biggest issue, of course, being spell shield on some of those big units. 
but they they just do this and we're fine with this we'll just take this block really curious now about whatever it was that they snap picked uh we'll play a general oh they hit us with the equinox that's fair we do have another one but that's the sort of thing that makes you at least a little bit sad you know we have this spider and this strike but i think we're actually going to pass i think we kind of want to sit in our resources if we can't play another general saving these as potential yasuo triggers is a pretty big deal because they still have a number of invoked cards over there and so i think right now the actual big concern is when they played the star shaping they snap picked something and so if it was if it was something that like obliterates two targets for example we would have to have a way to i think potentially save our yasuo or just follow up with something more nefarious let's actually slow play this we're not going to take the open attack we're going to play a twirler because we still have enough back for a general or some of these other plays it was living legends that they went with and so here is in fact the supernova that we were concerned about and so what we want to do here uh, a bit of a, a weird like reconnect thing i've been having problems with the internet lately i think what we want to do is try to save our yasuo while also getting rid of this as a potential blocker i mean it's really only going to block like one of these units but nonetheless it's also the more expensive card and then we're going to go ahead and play a general because they have no mana and because of the fearsome that can't block so they could have additional things like uh serpent serpent cannot block this though so this should be a reasonable source of damage we're sadly not threatening lethal the best we can do is get them down to two but i suspect they'll go down to three taking the bigger block here Good news for us is a lot of these cards go away at end of round so their their hand as impressive as it looks right now is not that resource heavy now i'm wondering if perhaps the little fluctuation i had with the internet connection maybe our opponent had it as well which would be a bit sad because this has uh, been a fun game so far so we'll play a little mini game while we wait. But yeah, maybe they also disconnected, which will be a rather anticlimactic way for things to end. But we did level up Riven. We did level up Yasuo. Got some powerful general plays. We got a good roar. I think overall, this is a success for today's video. And that's that's a victory that's a lot of fun so anyway we've we've made it we've made it to the end if you made it this far i appreciate you thank you for watching i'm really sorry sorry i'm i'm mentally uh playing through my head whether or not i wanted to just play another game because that is so anticlimactic but we did really cross everything off of the checklist right we leveled yasuo we got a cool roar and we got some big generals the game before that we leveled riven we had a good game there so i think this is good enough again today's goal is really just fun anyway so i think i think this will be enough uh thank you for watching i appreciate you and until next time may you walk on warm sands